Good morning. This is our first math lesson. Um, so we're going to start off with our learning target and success criteria. Um, the learning target is what our goal or target is by the end of this lesson. So our learning target today is that I will be able to evaluate claims that compare fractions. So today we're going to be evaluating claims uh, that compare fractions. Our success criteria tells us, yes, I've been able to meet my goal because I can or do or say the following thing. I can determine whether a claim is true or false using what I know about comparing fractions. So if students can master uh, evaluating claims, comparing fractions, they can do so by showing that they can answer using true or false and supporting it with some kind of evidence. So that, that determination piece. All right, so this first lesson is the last lesson we did in class. So I thought it'd be really nice to just start with kind of where we left off. So the first thing we're going to do is we have a number line and on our number line, we're going to plot some points. Our points are going to be these two particular fractions. So again, we need to be able to support our claim or agree true or false. And our claim reads three fourths is less than one half. So some 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 of us are going to go really quickly. Oh, I know that's true, or I know that's false. But how can you show it, and can you show it more than one way? All right. So right off the bat, um, not sure if we did take these home, but um, if we need to recreate these, that's pretty easy to do. Um, using our our fraction strips. We know that one strip and all strips are the exact same length. Each one represents one whole. So if I take a look and I'm going to pull out my fourths and keep it pretty close where it is here. And then our denominator looking at that, our halves. Again, putting it as close to each other as possible. So one thing that we can see visually, these fraction strips are all the same length, but then we also see that we know how many fourths equal one whole and how many halves equal one whole. But then we also, when lining it up, it should be pretty close. This is a little bit off. Oh, there it is, a little bit better. It should be pretty close. It's not going to be precise, of course, because we're not taking a ruler and measuring it. We're just kind of folding and, and lining it up that way. But we see that we have how many fourths? One, two, three fourths being compared to one half, one out of two halves, so here. So if we take a look, our three fourths goes all the way to this finger, and our one half, again, goes all the way to this finger. So we need to see which of those fractions is closer to one whole. Visually, we can see that three fourths is closer to one whole than one half. Kind of hard to cover, but I'm hoping you can visually see that as well. Okay, this is just one way to show if you have those fraction strips. Again, if you don't, good thing we are really good in the number line. So, looking at our two fractions, we have three fourths and one half. So fractions represent less than one whole. Because we have less than one whole, the two whole numbers we're going to start off with in our number line are going to be the two whole numbers that represent the numbers or the fractions in between. So that would be zero and one. The reason it's zero and one is because these two fractions, these numbers represent somewhere in between these two whole numbers. So first thing we're going to do Anytime we write those whole numbers, the easiest and best way to start is to figure out what is in between or exactly halfway, that midpoint between those two whole numbers. So we know that between 0 and 1 represents 1 half. Okay. So I also know that, again, 1 half is half of 2 halves. So if I were to continue and write my next fraction for halves, it would be right here, which would look like this. 
One out of two is one half. Two out of two is two halves, which also represents one whole. Anytime you have a numerator, top number, and a denominator, bottom number, that is the same number, this will always equal one whole. I'm going to go ahead and erase that now that we know that a little bit more. Sorry about that shiny spot. All right, now we need to go ahead and plot the three-fourths where it's going to be on that number line. So again, the denominator tells me how many parts are in my whole. So again, if I know that two out of two, 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 or two halves would give me one whole, what would be one whole for fourths? Four fourths. Remember, numerator, denominator, having that same number gives me one whole. So I know in order to get all the way over here, four fourths is going to give me one whole. So now I need to figure out, oh no, how many jumps from zero to one is going to give me, okay, I know it's four fourths, I know it's four jumps. So now I have to evenly distribute the number of jumps, four jumps from here to here. So I know because it's an even number that half of four is two. So one half is going to be equivalent to two fourths because half of four is two. Denominator does not change, it stays the same. So because I know that half of four is two, that two would naturally land in that halfway point. The reason I said that two fourths is equivalent to one half is because on the number line, and I'll demonstrate that one more time, what that looks like on our fraction strips, because one half is the same amount of distance as two fourths in our fraction strips. That means that they're equal amount of distance to our whole, to our one whole. Okay. All right, so now that I have two fourths plotted, I need to figure out where my one fourths and my three fourths are going to go. So the distance between our zero and our two fourths, okay, is only one space because the only number between zero and two is one. So exactly halfway between zero and two fourths would be where our one fourth would go. So we have zero, one out of four, two out of four, lots of space, four out of four. And so I should be able to recognize that I'm missing my, what's in between two and four. Halfway between my two fourths and my four fourths is my three fourths. All right, so once I have them all on my number line, I need to plot them. Plotting them just lets me see which numbers I'm comparing. So I have one half. This is how I plot it. I just hold up. And my three fourths. All right, so again, my claim is three fourths is less than one half. Three-fourths is less than one-half. So when I say the word less, that means three-fourths, excuse me, three-fourths is less than one-half. That means it's further from the one-whole than my one-half. So greater will represent closest to the one-whole. So three-fourths. Is it? less than one half, or is it greater than one half? Again, another reminder, just looking at our number line, always on the left, on the left side is our lowest or smallest number. As we move right towards our number line, our numbers increase. So the numbers on the right side of the number line will always be larger than the ones on the left. So whichever number is on the right side closest to the rightmost part of the number line will always be the largest number. Is three-fourths less than one-half? No, that's false. So I can go ahead and give my claim. False. Three-fourths is not, how about we write it 
and as a comparison sentence. False. Three fourths is greater than one half. If you have a number line, that is one way to show it. If you're using your number space, it's another way to show it. Lots of different ways to show how you know and how you can prove your work. So I could give a complete sentence. False. Three fourths is greater than one half because looking at my number line, three fourths is closer to one whole. Oh, squeezing it in and one half is two. So one. Two vote one. Okay, lots of different ways again for you to explain your evidence, but ultimately being able to create a number line, write down your fractions, plot your points, prove your claim. Okay, a lot of different things, but this is the last thing that we worked on, and we did spend some time working on both number line, plotting, and comparing fractions. So again, if you don't have these. Don't worry about it. If I need to make a quick video on how to do this, you just need to let me know. Okay. That is a pretty short lesson today, but today I just want you to focus on making a number line. Okay. Plotting your fractions to make your claim. Include all of those fractions for halves and fourths, make that claim and support it with a sentence or a picture or alternative way that you can share your thinking. All right, I'm gonna give you one problem to work on and we're gonna start on that tomorrow at the beginning of our video to see how you guys did. So the problem I give you now is how we're gonna start tomorrow's video. And so you can just check your work. Make sure you're on the right path. All right. I'm not going to write the number line because you're going to write the number line. But I do want you to agree or disagree, true or false statement, with this following claim. Ready? I think you can do it. So this is your homework for today. And we're going to start with your homework tomorrow on tomorrow's math lesson video. I wish you guys have a great day. Don't forget to do your math. This is what we're starting with tomorrow. Okay. All right.